after watching you against the goblins, I felt like damage judgment would have been really awesome in a couple spots. But right. I mean, your spot removal still did the job it was trying to yeah. do. So uh, we've got the all exciting Cobblade mirror match. And as a man who knows something about Cobblade, mm -hmm. a little uh, bit, perhaps a little you bit. can uh, get inside it. So we have AJ Soccer on one yeah. hand, this is David Palmer on the other. Now, uh, for those of you just joining us, I'm Gavin Verhey here in the booth with Glenn Jones and top eight competitor Jerry Thompson. Uh, and we're watching round eight between mm -hmm. the Star City Games Open Series here in Dallas, Fort Worth, between AJ Soccer and David Palmer. AJ is 6 0 1. Yes. AJ, yeah, I believe you got paired down. Yeah. AJ is 6 0 1. David Palmer is X1. They're getting deck checked this round? Okay, just give it okay. again. That's fine. So, right. uh, they may be about to experience a deck check. So on AJ's side, uh, blue, red, white, Cobblade. Fairly standard, still has Inferno Titan main deck, Lightning Bolt, uh, it's a couple of red cards, Cunning Spark Mage out of the sideboard. Uh, David Palmer, straight blue white, two Bane Slayer Angels in the main deck, four spreading seasons in the sideboard, otherwise a lot of more traditional. Yeah, very classic mm -hmm. deck list. Yeah, pretty traditional. Not that far off of something like Edgar Flores. Yeah. And you feel like a blue red white definitely has the advantage in this matchup? Uh, it, I, I think so, and David's got some spicy stuff in his sideboard. Oh, yeah. He's got he's got a few Sun Titans, and by a few and I mean I, I mean not a couple. I mean, <laughs> a, few, a trio, a trio <laughs> of Sun Titans. He can uh, go up to four Baneslayer Angels if he wants, three Divine yeah. Offerings. So uh, I think his goal is to kill the Basilisk Caller and hope AJ doesn't have his one Sun Titan to bring yeah. her back, and then his his fatties. Can probably crush him because I imagine AJ is gonna just snap board out all the day of judgments after game one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you feel Bane Slayer Angel is in this matchup? I don't think it's very good because if if one person has been kind of playing, playing around Mana Leak or Spell Pierce and they're just not casting their Jace, and then you just like resolve a Bane Slayer Angel, it's very easy for them to resolve a Jace or even right. like a Gideon and just like get all that tempo back. Right. But uh, after sideboard, I mean, it looks like that's what his plan is actually. Is... Okay. So, uh, so back to the game, traditional control start, except there's no two drops so far, no Mystics or Hawks. Players just playing lands and passing the turn. Yeah, I mean, David's David's got a decent amount of counter spells. He's got a few more than AJ, and maybe he's just trying to mana leak a Stoneforge Mystic, you know, rather than just, like, play his own and let AJ sure. resolve his, or, like, get lightning bolted or something, then he's behind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like... Yeah, David Palmer's deck has three mana leak, three, three spell pierce, one deprive, and a stoic rebuttal. So he's got two more counters than AJ? Three. Three more counters than AJ. Mm -hmm. At the expense of a Gideon Jura. Yeah, which is a big expense in this matchup. Agreed. Yeah. Gideon has been awesome all day. It, uh, Just look, seeing the things that guy has done. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. I mean, such good tempo against the beatdown decks, like really buys you the time you need. It was um, insane against your matchup against Monterey, actually, yeah. in that one game. Yeah. Where it shut down Koth completely. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I wanted to play a fourth one so bad. Like, I we considered playing one Titan in the board, like one Sun Titan. Mm -hmm. But I think Gideon is better than Sun Titan the majority of the time. So, wow. I think I'd almost rather go up to four Gideons. You guys are just dancing around each other. Yep. There's Tectonic Edge, which is one of the ways to gain some early momentum and stick a big spell. Yeah, that's one of the key cards in this matchup for sure. Yeah, and a key card that Agent does not have access to thanks exactly. to his red mana. Yeah, the Tectonic Edges have been great all day. Uh, just in every matchup we've seen both blue-white Cobblade against blue-red-white and blue-white-black. Hampering the blue-white-black decks mana base is a big deal. Looks like AJ is getting ready to pull the trigger here on a Squadron Hawk yeah. now that he has mana open to pay for mana leak. He has pretty full grip though also. Yeah. Even if he doesn't get leaked though, it's, it's so yeah. dangerous. Just the one? Yeah. Beginning the beatdown. Yeah. I really like watching AJ play this deck actually because he plays it so carefully, yeah. like around pretty much everything at all times. And he makes the right reads on his opponent's sequencing so often. He just seems to always know when they have the mana leak, when they have the spot removal, when they don't. Yeah, he just has a lot of insight into the deck that I think a lot of players who are just picking up the deck don't necessarily have. He has the experience with it. And yeah, I mean. He he's had he's had years on the pro tour too, so he has mm -hmm. a, he has a leg up on a lot of these people. Oh yeah, and I mean the two buys as he said the two buys don't hurt either. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely want those. I so think. I got I got something you might be interested in. Oh. I I have uh, my four squadron hawks signed. Oh, signed. I saw. Signed, yeah. yeah, signed by level six Alex Burton CD. Wow. I have level five mage AJ Soccer, level five mage Edgar Flores, 
and I didn't really want Ben Weinberg to sign one of my Hawks anyway, <laughs> so I got Drew Levin to sign one. So. Should have had them uh, change the, up the artwork to match each player. Yeah. That's the next step, right? All right, so here comes the second Hawk. Another Hawk. Little Beaters. Squeaking in for damage. How do you feel this matchup usually plays? I think it's just a, a tempo war or a control war if we can get sword there's, online there's first. There's so many different it's games so, that you can yeah, play. I've you play, it. like, when both players have counter spells, you, you can play this type of game where it's just like a control and control mirror. Or there are the games where, like, one player has Stoneforge Mystic or, like, they both have Stoneforge Mystic and then it's a tempo game. Or there's just, like, the Planeswalker game where you're, like, fighting with manlands and stuff like that. And uh, I think in the first two, AJ is favored. But in the the second one, where it's like all about planeswalkers and manlands, like his tectonic edges are going to be really key. Yeah. Definitely. I think AJ basically wants to be the beatdown in this matchup. So uh, this, this type of slow hand is, is kind of risky. But uh, looking, we see Inferno Titan, Gideon, Jura. A couple Gideons. He has an yeah. altered one that's kind of tough yeah. to see. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen that one come up yet. Uh, let's see. All right, so. David decides to go for Baneslayer Angel. Baneslayer here, Angel. Leaving only two mana on tap. Uh, probably planning to leak back a leak. Not gonna work if it gets if AJ has a spell pierce also, yeah, but it definitely opens herself up to spell pierce. Right, but this has gotta be the spell that he's willing to right. beat with, you know. No, it's totally fair. AJ just doesn't care. Ooh, Stone Forgey. Yeah, so he draws a Stone Forge Mystic. Pretty good draw for him there. Yeah, but this is the type of situation it looks like. AJ has a Jace. So he's going to yep. be able to play Jace, spell pierce his opponent's counter spell, whatever it might be. Yep. And then you just chase back to Baneslayer Angel, start brainstorming, and yeah. so far ahead. Yeah, tapping five main phase seems really risky. Exactly as narrated now. Yep. yep. And here we go, mana leak. And he's just going to pierce it. Yeah, I was definitely not happy with Baneslayer. This is, this is one of the reasons, you know. I mean, that's why you, uh, part of the reason why I know you switched on into the black, just because it gives you more options. You don't have to play cards like Bane Slayer Angel in your deck. Right. Um, you can close with Freebring Tar Pit instead. You've been pretty happy with the black over the red. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, two weeks, two top eights, like, <laughs> it's, it's hard to argue with that, you know? Yeah. Adam, really. Adam Kai is sitting at X and 1 with basically the same list as me. Uh, but he's playing against Hunter Burton's Mono Black Poison deck, which I think is actually a pretty bad matchup. Mono Black Poison playing. Oh man, I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, how, how is he not? Sick like? beats. I will. He, I'm sure with a more from. Yeah, he played Alex last round. Uh, guys... Man, Alex. Alex tells me the good decks too. Man, he's slacking. So it looks like David. He always tells me when he comes and gets beat by somebody. Gideon. The Gideon, and he's holding a still for Buttle, not doing uh, so much of protecting that yeah. Gideon there. Right. And see, it just doesn't matter here. Like, yeah. AJ, AJ can just Gideon right back. Yep. Just okay, trade Gideons, he's... continue pounding, brainstorm. It looks, it looks like he's firmly in the lead here. And he has a chase to pick up on cards. Right. I mean, like, I guess uh, he's got... David has another mana leak, I think. I couldn't really tell because of the glare. If he does, then that could make this turn a little more interesting. Yeah. But... Does AJ have any counter magic of a gun? No, he no, doesn't. So... Just power. <laughs> All the goods. <laughs> yeah, so his Gideon's probably gonna get countered. If he has if AJ has another land, which I don't think he does, but he'd be able to play like another two drop. Yeah. Get a sword. And uh, David will probably like play a Bane Slayer and have Bane Slayer Gideon, but then his Gideon might die. AJ does have a land, but it's a sea chrome coast. Yeah. So he's probably trying to evaluate the risk of dropping the Gideon here, but I guess he can just stone forge instead. But it seems like Gideon is just no, better. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, when he has a backup Gideon. Exactly. Like that's when, like, if this doesn't work, you just do it again next turn. Like, oh wow. How bad it can be, and that just Dave, goes through. David just let it resolve. Does David? I think he doesn't have a mana. Okay. I think he, he has just a stoic. Does have the stoic? Yeah. Just Players, the stoic. we do hope that you join us tomorrow so, for the legacy. Stoic open. Bane Slayer. We are see the other card. Free registration. I uh, just forgot drew a hawk. Interesting. Dang. Come back and join Broncos. us tomorrow. You want to sleep in a little bit? Yeah, he did. Make sure that you are all signed up for that event. Uh, he has Follow a day of judgment in his hand, Jason also. 
He will David Palmer does. That is thirty dollars. We will be collecting deck Dan lists Hawk. at the start of the event, similar to what we did today. Cocoon. So you don't need to turn in a deck list and lock yourself in tonight. All you need to do, come on up, get him your DCI number and the $30, he'll get you signed up. Also, remember that we do have our draft opens tomorrow. Those we will be opening registration for at 8 a.m. when we open the doors. First one starts at 9 a.m. The second one will start at 2 p.m. They are capped at 64 players and are now single elimination, just to simplify a few things. So if you're interested David, yeah, in those events, Legacy Oops, free sword, registration that's is probably going to get lightning bolted. Jason. Yep. And the draft opens. And registration will start at 8 a.m. and we will start that at 9 a.m. You have some flexible removal spells and it is pretty much good use here. Yep. And if I were AJ, I would probably follow up with a Gideon. Uh, he does have the option to play Inferno Titan, but mm -hmm. no, it's you, really, really no, weak to Day of Judgment. Yeah, so. it just opens you up too far. Might as well get yeah. in. That way you're just solid against the Day and solid against everything else. Of course, a Jace Brainstorm might reveal. Yeah, it, it might change his place, but just yeah. based on what he has now. Yeah, definitely. Sure. I mean, he, he could, like, sword equip too if he brainstorms yeah, into a land. Exactly. Judge! It looks like he had another co oh, Colonnade. Yeah. Not Coast. Coming from Black Lane. Yep, more of those. Oh, and a planes. Is that a planes? No, it looks like two coasts and a colonnade. So, yeah. if he did play that coast last turn, he'd be able to mystic sort of quip. Sure. And it looked like David was moving a card to the front there to get it ready to discard, but uh, kind of hard to tell. All right, so he's just gonna preordain. Preordain, probably shipping both, right? I imagine. Yep, <laughs> doesn't even look. It's one <laughs> oh, handy. Yeah, it was super. And the Gideon? There's the yep. Blocker. For two. Pretty far ahead here, two point walkers. Yeah, yeah David's, David's play this turn is probably like Bane Slayer, give it protection from blue so you can't get bounced with Jace. Yep. And AJ, hang on. <laughs> AJ, yeah, AJ has to put on the brakes for a turn, plus two Gideon again, most likely. And But then Bane Slayer just swings in, into Gideon, he yep. uh, cracks back. No. Uh -huh. He's and kills Bane Slayer. Oh, I guess not. He's right. hawking. Squadron hawk time. Sword. Yes. Yeah. Seems like this is a tough sequence to try and just like grind it out against. Like AJ's so far ahead, you need to yeah. make bigger swings. Yeah, you, like you have to go for the big play and you know five, <coughs> get like a good luck, a little lucky. But that's not uh, what David's plan is playing uh, different game. Yeah, I mean he's keeping up Stoke rebuttal mana, but mm -hmm. there's not really anything he's scared of. You know? Yeah, like everything like can't get much worse. Every, <laughs> everything that AJ has is already in play, unfortunately. So. Right. Yeah, if AJ has more pressure, you know, Dave's probably dead anyway, right? So, I feel like you have to go for the base. Well, no, he's got the bolt. Yeah. That'll get him through for another pound. Unless, of course, David decides to stoic, which would be really bold. I think, hmm. You might have to. Back to land. Yeah, he might, he might just actually be, like, close to stone dead if he doesn't stoic or buttle the lightning bolt. Which would be really awkward. Yeah, David is in a pretty rough spot here. I don't know how he's going to come back from this one. AJ only plays two mountains, right? Three. Three? Okay. Well, I have three. I don't know how many AJ has. Yep, three mountains. So three, then. okay. I just look in the Inferno Titan. Very, very bold. Why bolt when you can Titan? <laughs> I don't know. That seems like a disaster waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. That's a real spell. It is certainly a real spell. If it gets stoic, I guess you just animate Gideon and fight? Or, or do you plus two it? Yeah, I mean, maybe that's what AJ is trying to do, just like play around something yeah. fringe, like condemn. Right. I was thinking, like, I was th that was the line I was thinking. If you bolt and he counters it, you definitely just start battling. But, Whoa. like, because then you can animate Colonnade and animate Gideon and smack right, him right. for a ton. Like, even if he, like, he has to chump there. So you'll get in for six. And still have a hand packed full of the goods. So AJ is 
going to play as mount, and just going to bolt down that hop. Okay, yeah. yeah. So oh, so he did the yeah. exact, like, that was the line I was wondering if he could take, if he could go bolt and then Inferno Titan after he got rebuttaled, and he went the other way with it. Which is interesting. It makes me think he really wanted to get that Stoic rebuttal out of his opponent's hand if he was yeah, going to take that particular line. I thought the same way. And he got good value on the Titan, considering he would lose it to a Day of Judgment anyway. So forcing his opponent into a position where it was a must counter spell rather than a let it resolve, take three, and Day of Judgment in. Yeah, absolutely. Plus, if David somehow manages to back himself out of this one, like, AD doesn't want his, like, Jace or whatever. Jace. Mm hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jace or Gideon. Good. Seems pretty close to dead now, though. Yeah, it's not, not such a good position for David. Baneslayer all ins. And then yeah. we see what happens, I guess. Yeah, okay, Baneslayer Angel. No. No, I guess also calling it. Kill Chase. Okay. Oh, and then Baneslayer, I assume? Yes. Day of Judgment, if he has it. Oh, he did. Day of Judgment, like but he's still dead. But yeah, then he's just dead to get no. in, so he has okay. to play two Hawks. Yeah. He's still pretty dead. Where's your Inferno Titan now, AJ? You can kill all those Hawks. <laughs> <laughs> so true, so true. I don't think he's too worried, though. No. Yeah. No. Does not seem uh, perplexed. AJ's in a pretty <laughs> flush situation. Yeah. Colonnade. Yep. Pretty sure Don't that's right. right. Colonnade and everybody. Yeah, serves in. Boom. Kills two. Grave drops two. And, and I can get in on the other side. I can colonnade yeah. on the other side. Double. Real hop. close to just dead. Put more out there. And here comes Jay. Just out of the. Just, just so AJ can assemble everything. You yeah, need. check the top, leave it. That's probably. You probably it. would have conceded in response to checking the top card there, just so you don't get more information. But. Eh, I don't think that's that big a concern, especially when you're playing uh, like blue white Cobblade against, you know. I mean, I just don't know what out David Palmer has. Probably none. He probably has sequences that can k maybe keep him alive, but no actual, like I'll win the game out. <laughs> Baneslayer Angel, even if it were somehow able to survive, is still mm -hmm. trumped by that Jace. Yep. Although I guess you give it the sword, you can't bounce it anymore. It's interesting that uh, one of the things I was noticing, Ryan took a draw against AJ earlier. I'm going to depart from oh, this game a little yes. bit since it was, uh, kind of seems pretty over. But, uh, and I noted that because Valakut is his worst matchup, and Valakut very rarely draws. Right. And the TMI from Edison, I think there were actually zero draws amongst Valakut decks, something yeah. like that. Whereas Callblade, his best matchup is the deck that draws the most. Also, Ryan's best matchup. Yeah, and that's Valakut awesome. is probably his worst matchup, right? So, like by taking a draw, they both put themselves in a bracket where they were really likely to only face their best matchups and avoid their worst ones. And it made me actually think about it a lot. Like Callblade players in this kind of situation, like you, you see, David's really far behind, and this is the kind of thing that leads to Callblade players drawing. You know, like this game's not to say David's, you know not putting it together or anything, but this game is probably going on much longer than it needed right. to. Like, AJ was far enough ahead that he wasn't going to come back Yeah, when we were watching probably Edgar, a turn or two ago. When we were watching Edgar Flores play earlier, like, he was very quick to pack in his cards. Yeah. He knows that all the time is so crucial. Yeah, exactly. He can't afford to lose any of it. And I feel like that same thing's going on here. Like, see, we're trading Jace's, but okay. we're at two life, so all right, Jace is not a shock. And we've got a Bane Slayer, but... I don't know what that's going to do. Jump Gideon, go up to seven, go down to one. Yeah. Right, and yeah, okay, now we're back in. Yeah. But those are the kind of moments that are worth noting. Like with Cobblade, you really need to he be mindful the of your time. He's a Gideon. <laughs> uh, so, uh, how do you feel like. Uh, so, Spreading Season is a card that I was talking with AJ about earlier. He doesn't feel, feel like it's good in, uh, against the blue, red, red, white Cobblade deck. Would you board it in here if you were David Palmer? No, not only is it not very effective, but I don't know what he would possibly want to take out. He already has. Yeah. Three Sun Titans, two Bane Slayers, and three Divine Offerings that I assume he wants to bring in. And I think the Day of Judgments are probably mm -hmm. easy cuts. And, I mean, past that, it's like shaming counter spells or, like, deciding how many Bane Slayers you want, so... Yeah, I mean, how do you... Bane Slayer Angel didn't look great that game. AJ said Bane Slayer Angel just is a trap in this matchup. Like, do you think you'd just board out all your Bane Slayers and go bigger with Sun Titan? Um, I don't know. It seems like most players that I've talked to have Bane Slayer Angel in their deck. 
both because it's good against aggro, but because it's playable in the mirror as well. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure what David's plan is. Like, he could very easily be trying to go mono fatties with Bane Slayers and Sun Titans, or maybe he just wants the Titans and the Divine sure. Offerings. It's very possible, you know, it's sort I mean, of in the main as a hedge. It can, it's reasonable in this match about yeah. being good, and post he doesn't intend to utilize it very heavily. I think the cleanest sideboarding you could do is plus three Sun Titan, plus three Offering, and take out four Day of Judgment and two Bane Slayers. Yeah, I, I like that sideboarding a lot. Brings in, a, like, I think Sun Titan has got to be better than Bane Slayer until this matchup, and you don't want oh, for sure. yeah, that's true, that's six true. baddies, like, you know, crowding you up or whatever. And then Divine Offering is obviously important, although you felt like Divine Offering just wasn't all that crucial. Correct. Uh, so you ended up playing Into the Royal instead, is that been pretty good for you? Uh, I mean, it's good in theory. Like, I, I played the Mirror round three, and it, like, did some things, but did some things. It, it wasn't it wasn't all that impressive. It's not like Divine Offering yeah. would have saved me, but uh, Into the Royal was good. It was, it has a lot of utility, you know, like, if, if they play a Sword and Equip and you get to Divine Offering it, you know, that's great, but... Uh, if they play a Gideon and plus to it, like you're you're just stuck for the most part. Sure, right. Divine Offering's not that good, but into the Royal in that situation is just awesome. Yeah. So I kind of just wanted the utility, and you know, like you know, you can bounce a Sun Titan, maybe counter it on the way down, or make him discard it with Swords, right. something like that. So. I mean, and early on, like if you're playing the tempo game, play Jace and Gideon, you can be like, okay, bounce your Jace, play my own Jace, like brainstorm, yeah. just get so far ahead so fast, um, or at least stop falling so far, far behind. There's always like the rest too. Right, right. Yeah, the black version has such a different angle in this matchup because between Duress and Inquisition, uh, you gain, like, you get to pick apart their hands. Oh, yeah. And that's a, a toolbox these players just don't have access to. Like, I was talking, uh, I started testing for GP Dallas, which I'm not really sure I'm going to yet, but uh, <laughs> I was, I came, after I tested for like two hours or something, I was like, well, I know eight of the cards in my deck four Inquisition Cause Luck and four Swamps. So now, like, Past that, I'm gonna start figuring out other stuff. Four swamps? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play. I don't really like the Esper Void deck that much. I think it's okay, but I think I want to play more black cards. A bit well, more you can play Hunter Burton's deck. Yeah, apparently. So, so I'll have to check so it out. Hunter Burton, mono black. So, so Hunter Burton just locked for top eight? Is that what no, no, that's, that more, that's, more, that's more. That's more Kendrickson. Okay. He's a U.S. National top eight competitor playing mono red, and he's seven and one. So um, Hunter Burton's deck, mono black. Uh, in Poison, you said, right? Yes. Uh, tell us about it a little bit. Uh, I don't know much. I know that he killed a friend of mine on turn four by just by playing turn three Crusader against Mono Red, and then, like, turn four, just, like, two Adventure Gears and a Fetch Land. He's just dead. Yep. So, I mean, he's got that. I assume he's got some discard, some removal, some some more little like poison it. guys, probably. I like I mean, it. Are your poison creatures, like, Bat Mother, Crusader, Plague Stinger? I'm not really sure. I mean, okay. he could have the Artifact Eyes. I'm not sure if he's playing Bat Mother, you know, like. Sure. I mean, yeah, it might be a little expensive. That, that's pretty awesome. I thought when you said mono black, like poison, I was okay. So it's like a control deck. You top out on like crusaders and bat mothers or whatever, right? But no, it sounds like he's more aggressive, which is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. adventuring gear definitely leads me to believe that he's got a lot of two shorts. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, that sounds cool. And X one right now, right? So yep. when's this one likely a lock for top eight? That would be nice. <laughs> that would be some nice variation in the field of cobbler. I mean, try and get a deck tech on it maybe after next run. Either way. Yeah. Stretching it, stretching it. <laughs> so hard to get him at the end of the day. We were talking with AJ about this. When do you feel the right time to cast your preordains are? Uh, it depends, depends on, on the composition well, of the hand. For, yeah, yeah. It depends on the hand, depends on the matchup, whether or not you know what they're playing, and it depends what lands you have. Especially in this Esper deck, there's a decent amount of lands that come in and play tapped, so if. Uh oh, looks like David's mulling the five. Not good sense for David. I believe those are one tectonic edge hand as lands. But yeah, I mean sometimes you have say you have Plains, Glacial Fortress, Creeping Tar Pit, Preordain, and some sort of white two drop. Like in that situation you have the opportunity to preordain on turn one and then still play your two drop on two. But it's almost always better to just like play tar pit, play planes, play your two drop, then play coast, then preordain, and you know, play another squadron hawker, put in your sword. So, I mean, it's kind of like Brainstorm where you get to wait to cast it. You don't, you know, have to wait. You get to wait. So it's it's a lot of added benefits where you don't necessarily know what you want to draw. So there's no real point. And in a couple, like, maybe on turn one you need some lands. But on turn three, like, maybe you've drawn a four lands. Now you want some business. So it, it just depends. Yeah, I mean, I, I, def I definitely think a lot of players blow the preordains too early. And like knowing when to cast it in a deck like this is so crucial. Knowing like what cards you need to find, like how early you want to be searching for them. 
Uh, like AJ said, if you don't have a two drop, you basically yeah. always preordain on turn one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, digging for a two drop is pretty important. One of the things I actually kind of noticed was uh, in AJ's game against Blue Black Control, his opponent went, you know, turn one tap line, turn two whip pass, turn three preordain with two up. And like, it, from his opponent's play, it just became really clear that the guy had a mana leak. Yeah. And part of that was the sequencing he'd taken with preordain there yep. on that third turn. That's also true, but there's no real way around that. Sure, sure. And it's also, you can you can represent Mana League that way, too. Yes, very true. It's just an interesting addition to the game of when do you preordain. Absolutely. Very skillful for the matchup. And it uh, looks like David Palmer is not playing a two-drop. And uh, AJ's going to go for Squadron Hawk. Kakao, Kakao. Looks like it's resolving. I think David has a Gideon and a land in addition to some other cards. Oh, uh, looks like a foil day of judgment. A day also? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then a couple Pretty lands right. probably. So he did keep in some days. Makes me think he did side out the Bane Slayers. I'm not sure what else he cut. Maybe, maybe like shave some counter spells or something. I'm not really sure. Maybe deprive. I don't. I don't feel like I like deprive that much when you have tectonic edges to lean on also because you can put yourself too far back. Yeah, I could agree with that. And like yeah, it looks like a Gideon, a land, and a day, another land. Maybe, is that two days? A lot of days. In comes AJ seems to have the kind of draw you want here. Little beaters, a way to find your sword. Yep. Seven cards in hand. <laughs> All the little things. Yeah. Seven cards in hand, well, that's a good one. So, uh, it, just like uh, he talked about, wait till turn three, preordain. Sends them both south. Yeah, it looks past his turn. And AJ knows he's going to be able to hit his land drops where David Palmer might have issues doing just that. So he's willing to play the waiting game here. It's interesting. I don't think AJ has a counter spell. And he definitely has Hawk and some Forge Mystic. Yep. And a sort of Feast and Famine, it looks like. So he doesn't necessarily care if his Mystic gets countered. But I think he just wants to keep up the illusion that he has a mana leak or a spell pierce so sure. that his opponent doesn't just run Jace out there. But if I were David, if I were in his spot, it seems like he's so far behind that, I mean, I'm not sure what his game plan is. If he has a Jace, he just doesn't cast it. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. And then if, if that does happen, then AJ wants to have creatures in play, too, you know, to start attacking that Jace. So. I mean, and on the on the like other side from AJ's perspective, like when you have all these gigantic threats, your opponent will get to five. He's not yeah. going to have a ton of counter spells, and if he spends all of his cards countering what you have, then he's just out of cards. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. AJ very content to tap out here. He's not actually fearing a Jace. Uh, he has the sword in his hand, so he can kill a Jace that plus twos, and he can obviously attack it to death with a brainstorm. So and interestingly, AJ uh, switched up Vassal Scholar. Yeah, here well, we I think he, he has the has sword a piece of piece of <laughs> So that probably gives it away, so to speak, but Or maybe David just thinks that he has a spark mage now. I mean, right, exactly. yeah. I mean I was gonna say you could play around uh, divine offering by getting a second sword, but True. Uh, I, if you draw cunning spark mage, the matchup is just so far in AJ's favor, uh, with the amount of cards David has that has access to. Uh, so Gideon? Gideon? Yep, Gideon comes down. He recognized David just has to tap the Gideon. And now it's kind of a bit more of a game again. Yep. Yeah. Just shows you how good Gideon is in yeah. this matchup. Yeah, Gideon's unbelievable. Like pass, I said, pass, I, I, pass, pass, Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of want four Gideons, you know? Doesn't seem like the worst. Seem great in the mirror, seem great against a beatdown. Sword puts Gideon to dead without any other kind of interaction on the next turn, but as we know, there's definitely going to be some interaction. Day of Judgment. Rug and Valakid are the only ones where you probably don't want four Gideons, but I've been more than happy with three. Yeah. I actually like Gideon against Valakut a fair bit, too. They can't kill it. Yeah, he just play it. Attack you. <laughs> <laughs> Block with Primeval Titan. All right, sweet card. Yeah. <laughs> nice cultivate. What have we got here? Divine Offering? Yep. So there's the Offering on the sword. Interesting. It's like an end of sword, man sort I of guess, body yeah. Body That's interesting. I don't know. I guess he's waiting until he can go day with Leak Up for the next spell, but... I don't think he's like in a look that luxurious a position. I might have just dayed here to get all these dudes gone. Yeah. AJ doesn't have that many fatties. One of the things is AJ playing the same deck, you know, week to week. 
his opponent's privy to a lot of information. Like he knows if he studied those deck lists, what AJ's tendencies will be. I think it's possible David is <laughs> worried about uh, AJ casting Gideon on his own if he went for day. That's also fair. Uh, yeah, but he. he but played, if the creatures he are all gone, sword, it's not that bad. He played sword equip. Yeah. The turn that he could have played Gideon into Gideon, yeah. so it's pretty likely he doesn't have it. Right. And even if he does, that's just AJ tapping out, and then he gets a free turn to play a spell, which hopefully he has a good one. Yeah. Yep. It. See, and now he's actually a little strapped for resources based on that one. I don't think I like that decision. Now, do you think we'll see that day yeah. come out? I think we have to now. I think it would have been a lot stronger on the previous turn, though. Thanks about it. All those creatures seem so bad. Uh, they're so you know, bad, why, but... Why would you want to wrap those things away? I mean, when one one flyers for two dominate the format, and one twos for two. Yeah, squires and uh, welkin hawks yeah. all day long. <laughs> Strange world we live in, and then every deck wants to play those cards too. All backed by sort of pieces, man. All right, yeah, he goes yep. there, and then Gideon probably get in for six here. Maybe. What, what's it loyalty is the Gideon actually at right now? I want to say like three or four, but... I believe two, actually. It was eight, it took five, then up to three. Yeah, I think it's two. I believe it's two, so he may have wanted to get it out of bolt range, but he did not do that. Seizing the opportunity to race here is reasonable, of course. I mean, yeah, I've seen a lot of games end with Gideon just turning sideways over and over and the opponent failing to answer it. Absolutely. Once again, I think David knows that he's pretty far behind, so he's to take every... Opportunity he has. So, Hawk Hawk and Followed by AJ. Sounds like a bad movie title. But. <laughs> <laughs> and another colonnade by AJ. I don't know why. I definitely messed with Gideon. Man. Looking grim for Gideon. Almost certainly dead somehow. <laughs> so, the only question is what kind of value do you try and get out of it now? Yeah, I mean, that colonnade is at the very least going to pick it off, unless, uh, the only thing would be if Palmer has a tectonic edge. Nope. He already used the he one he had. He burned the one he had, yeah. Yeah. We on Divine Offering Mana Leak here? I believe it. that's what we have. Or no, Sword of Body in my Mana Leak. My mistake. Yeah. Alright, so uh, you're just going to serve him with that Gideon. Mm-hmm. AJ wants to kill the Gideon cheap, but paying six life to get it with two hawks is so rough. Yeah, I mean, it's I, the sort of play where it's like, eh, this I, is kind of risky, but yeah, I think you have to take it just in case he has like I drew a hack edge or something for the. Well, he played Colonnade this turn. He already knows that he can't tech edge, so like the, sure. he's basically sure, saying sure. like, I think I can race that Colonnade on seven life, which is certainly possible, but. Hawks will, will certainly give him some nice blockers to help that. Yep. Is that a Gideon? That is a Gideon. <laughs> that will relieve a significant amount of the pressure. Once again, an awesome draw. Shows you how awesome Gideon is. <laughs> so how many points do you get for winning a standard open, Jerry? I don't know. Is it 25? 25? <laughs> Jeez, that's a lot. Man, how many points ahead of you is Alex? I have 65, he has 81. 81? Okay, so that would put you pretty much pretty much in the race there. So. Yeah, that's what I was theorizing. I just thought I'd check on that. I was just checking that max, ma math with Alex, who dropped by the booth, guys. So. I was just letting the audience know I was checking the math with you. Alex stays up on these things. AJ, slow, slow, slowing down on the Gideon? Slow, slow, slow? AJ went for Gideon, <laughs> David uh, Manley. Too. Oh, he Manley. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Now AJ's. Do you think AJ should have? Well, no, I guess there's not really any way he could have done this differently. 
I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, I guess he could have shipped a collar, but... No. I think Being at one more life block. here is not really that relevant. Yeah. Another hawk to block is probably just way better. He knows all he has to... Oh, Divine Offering. Offering. That's also pretty That's strong. A Basically a chump block, but it also kills yeah. his opponent's <laughs> hell. Like. Danger life, kill your sword. So. David's living on the top now, but AJ is at six, so... Well, up to nine now for the offering. Oh, oh well, yeah, that's sorry. Yeah. We haven't gotten our offering. The old peel. Yeah, you can tell when you... All right, yeah, calling it in. Boom. Four. Drops AJ down to five. Island. Just plays out on Island. Protecting against the Feast and Famine. Yep, good call. Man is pretty important with that colonnade active. He can actually play spells after right. attacking if he can get up to a reasonable amount. Oh, and, uh, looks like AJ's colonnade's about to red zone. Yeah, well, I mean, with, with That's uh, scary. David sitting at 18, AJ knows he has to start getting in there. Don't know how much action AJ has going on. Doesn't look like a whole lot there. Yeah, Preordain, land? Is there another spell? It looks like Preordain to me, yeah. Preordain, Arid Mesa. Yep. Well, I guess he didn't have Feast and Famine after all. Unless, no, I don't, he never had a way to get it back, so yeah. <laughs> yep, just the five points so he can chump with the other. Yeah, makes sense. Makes so perfect sense. Drops AJ down to 13. And I'm equipping sorry, the collar. Yeah, yep, very strong. And ships the collar to the hawk, meaning that it'll uh, trade with the colonnade if it decides to attack. Thanks to its death touch. The game has certainly slowed down a little bit. But, yeah, Stoneforge Mystic, that's a pretty good draw for uh, Palmer here. It's a real draw. And down comes Sword of Peace and Famine, equip it to the uh, Mystic. Reasonable. I've seen worse magical spells. Uh, another pre order. I think we might burn one now. Yep. <laughs> Feels like a good time to cast pre order. If you're asking questions about when you should cast pre order, this would be a, a good one to know. Alright, yeah, let's see what AJ finds. Oh, we have no idea. Yeah. AJ finds two cards worthy of thought and I worthy of the bottom. Camera, yeah. Yeah. No, no problem. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Looks like he drew another divine offering. Yep. I mean, I, I really don't think he needs it in this situation, but no. it's still just kind of cute to yeah. have so answers time for all of opponent his opponents for the healing yeah. salve. Like. Yeah, good old healing salve plus the spray your sword. Yeah, fight you. So, have you guys have you guys seen my deck list? Uh, yes. I believe I glanced at it. Uh, did you see that it was 61? <laughs> yes, I did oh, see that. We talked that. about that on the air. I hate you. Which one? Oh. You just couldn't. You just couldn't cut uh, 61. the last card. Oh, just really? cut the fourth hawk. Oh. We need four. No, that, that was exactly <laughs> it. I want to only play three. <laughs> so everyone at home is copying Jerry Thompson's deck. You can, you can just cut the fourth squadron hawk. No, because I wanted to play a 27th land. I played 26 land last week. In and, a control deck yep. for the first time in forever. And I was like, you know, I need that 27 land. And I only really wanted three hawks. But then I was like, you know what? Putting that hawk in there is just a giant AJ free passes without cracking his fetch. I generally like to crack the fetch in spots like these. Like, if he tries to crack later and his opponent, you know, drew and play Tectonic Edge or something, that could be unfortunate. Well, he already preordained some bad cards to the bottom. Sure, but I'm saying like he's pl he's pl probably going to divine offering this turn. Is when it can, well, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. I mean, AJ has old trumps. Standard Trump AJ's the, uh, Stoneforge, not the Colonnade. I guess point. Oh, his point has a second Colonnade. Whoops. Ooh. AJ's sitting at two, but he's uh, don't let the life totals deceive you. 
still quite far ahead. It's a reasonable card, <laughs> as spells go. He might just be more interested in trying to close it out, though. I suppose he's not losing too much if he takes that line, but most of his lines aren't losing too much here. I think I think he's probably in a better spot if he gets Spark Mage online. I think you're right. Looking at it, David could draw a like a risky. Sun Titan or something. Yeah, that actually just all of a sudden makes it a game and can squeeze in that last point. Yeah, I mean, otherwise otherwise he has to colonnade and then put put collar on Hawk or something or yep. collar up. Oh, that's the definitely. Colonnade. Yeah. I mean, if he collars the colonnade. He's probably going to have to chump his opponent's colonnade, or, uh, you know, all of his work that turn was undone anyway. Yep, I agree. So, yeah, he's got to develop his board, I think. David, feel this card. We don't know what it is yet, do we? Oh, it's AJ's just cracked up fetch. I assume he drew a brick yeah. and a free attack. He just got one life. That's all you need. It's true. First 19 points are completely worthless. Yeah. <laughs> much. Or, of course, that's what uh, Pat Sullivan would like you to think. <laughs> Thinking about these two cards also. Splitting it, it looks like. Oh, Jeez, Jace. Pretty reasonable. But I don't, know. I don't know if that's the right line of play. No, I feel like you just spark major. Well, one get one in here and then spark major equip, right? I don't know. He's that's. Is he tap two? Yes, yeah, C Chrome. Okay. It's confused for a second. This is a weird is line. Do you have two blue mana? Yeah, it's a sea chrome coast with a celestial colonnade. I don't think it's that strange. He didn't want to make a play. Like, he doesn't want to uh, call her a hawk and then have his opponent draw a Jace. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, be able to kill him in two turns or something, so. I might have actually let Jace go to one there. Against the colonnade rather than... Like that was ba that's basically like a free chump later on. Yeah. By letting him go to one. It is, it is hard to, to just turn down that trade, you know. Like sure, sure. Squadron hawk for a call on it, but yeah. I mean, it might have been fine to just take it too, you know. Yeah, I think I would have preferred to take it. But AJ continues his uh, drawing the answers that he doesn't even necessarily need, where he drew a Gideon this yeah. turn. So. <laughs> Plenty of cushioning for AJ. Hmm. It's like the princess and the pea over here, just all of the cushions. You went deep for that one. <laughs> yeah, pretty deep. <laughs> Might be able to move a stretch. Yeah. Get in with the plus two. Uh, there's Gideon. <laughs> Very necessary. Plus two. Mm, spark Mage sit. Yeah, it's gotta be Spark Mage, right? Yeah, he could hold the offering, I guess, but. I don't know for what real gain. Yeah, I don't know what you're playing scared of. But. Maybe he thinks his opponent will drop out a creature more readily if he doesn't have the Spark Mage out. The only creature that seems like especially good with this Sun Titan, which might get back a creature along with itself anyway, so. The other Colonnade. David's probably thinking those lightning bolts seem real sweet right about now. Uh, offerings down that, uh, that sword. Did you get to untap yet again? Did I just meant divine offering, or is that Baneslayer? That's Baneslayer, I think, actually. And David Palmer's hand. Gideon, Jace, Basilisk, Collar, Celestial Colonnade. It just got quite the arsenal. Five life. Cunning Spark Mage, too. Yeah, I'm pretty Cunning safe. Spark Mage, yeah. Reordering his hand, giving him anything. Spark Mage equipped. Planes walk away. Oh, Colonnade. I guess Man. you can ship the collar to the Colonnade and pick up more life. Yeah. Oh, he's just going at it. 
crash your ten. Oh, and then you play Spark Mage and deal one. Yeah. Yep. And that's it. Oh, and yeah, he's an 11. Haha. Hop baits. Assuming everything goes okay next round. Hop baits in another. <laughs> another open series. Yes. 